So to get the geometries that we see in molecules, we can't get them directly from the atomic orbital. The atomic orbitals don't have bond angles of 195 or 120. So we do a mathematical technique of hybridizing our atomic orbitals. The technique would be called linear combination of atomic orbitals. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that so much as just how we, what we are blending together, what atomic orbitals are blending together. So that would be our hybridization. And it's based on the electron geometry alone, not on the molecular geometry, the electron geometry alone. And the hybridization, so we have uh, our five electron geometries. We have two effective electron pairs. We have a linear geometry. Well, if we have two areas of electron density, we need to blend together two orbitals. So we take an S orbital and P orbital, blend them together, and we'll get a SP hybridization. And I'll have our bond angle of 180 degrees. So for a true planar electron geometry, we need three areas of electron density. So we bring in three atomic orbitals, uh, S and two P orbitals. So we call it SP2 hybridization. And it has our bond angle 120 degrees. For a tetrahedral geometry, we have four areas of electron density. We need four orbitals. We bring in the S and the three P to give us four orbitals. So we get an sp3 hybridization, and that gives us our bond angle of 190.5. For trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry with five areas of electron density, we need five orbitals. So we bring in our s, our 3p, that gives us four. We have to bring in d, so we have a d sp3 hybridization. And the last one, octahedral, we need six areas of electron density, so we bring in our s, our 3p, and then 2d, so we have a D2 sp3 hybridization for um, the octahedral electron geometry. The, um, the number of orbitals that we put in equal the number of orbitals that uh, we get out. So we'll be doing it a little bit differently uh, in a little bit, uh, doing molecular orbitals. So here we're still looking at the hybridization of the central atom. So what does the central atom have to do to give us that to the geometry? And it's good technique. It works well. It doesn't give us every bit of information. So that's why we have to add on the electro orbitals that we'll do in a little bit. So when these problems here uh, give the hybridization of the following molecules. So we're asking for the central atom. And we would be giving you the black only. And you would have to draw your own Lewis structure, figure out your geometry before you can answer it. So for xenon tetrabromide, we end up with four atoms, and we have these two lone pairs also on there. So we're exceeding that tet. So four atoms, two lone pairs means that we have uh, six areas of electron density, so octahedral electron geometry. The molecular geometry is a square planar, but octahedral is what determines it. That means that we have a D2 sp3 hybridization. And then the one underneath it, this is the compound benzene. And um, this is a line, skeletal line drawing for organic compounds. Wherever we have a bend, we have a carbon. Uh, if we don't, if we have some other element besides carbon, we'd have to show it. We don't show hydrogens. We know the carbon loves four bonds. So each of these is currently showing only three bonds. So the real structure is over here. So each of those carbon has a hydrogen coming off of it. So each carbon actually has three atoms attached to lone pairs. So the three areas of electron density, since there's no lone pairs, the electron and electron geometries are the same. We have trigonal planar. Trigonal planar is an sp2 hybridization. So three areas, we need three orbitals, but s and two p's. So sp2 hybridization. The triiodide molecule, when we do our electron structure, we're going to have more electrons than an octet can hold. So the central atom is going to end up exceeding the octet. It's going to have two atoms and three lone pairs on it, total five. 
So it makes electron geometry trigonal bipyramidal. The molecular geometry is linear, but the trigonal bipyramidal determines the uh, hybridization. So we have five areas of electron density. We need five orbitals. That's the DSP3. Gives us those five orbitals. So we have a DSP3 hybridization. So dichlorodifluoromethane, um, we draw out the Lewis structure. We see the carbon has four atoms, no lone pairs. No lone pairs means electron and electron jump are the same. And with four areas of electron density, we have a tetrahedral. And tetrahedral means four orbitals, and that's a sp3 hybridization. Hydrogen cyanide. When we draw the structure, we end up with a single bond hydrogen and a triple bond between carbon and nitrogen. So the carbon has two atoms, no lone pairs. Uh, again, our electron and electron geometry are the same because there's no lone pairs. And it'll be a linear geometry. And these are only two orbitals, so that would be a sp hybridization. Sulfur hexafluoride, we have six atoms attached onto the sulfur, no lone pairs. So six will make it an octahedral. No lone pairs means that the electron and molecule are the same. But that would be our D2 sp3 hybridization. Selenium dioxide, when we do our um, Lewis structure, we see that we have two atoms and a lone pair on the selenium. So we have three areas of electron density around it. That would make a trigonal planar for electron geometry. Electron geometry is bent, but that doesn't affect our hybridization. So a trigonal planar would be our sp2 hybridization. And water, when we draw that out, we have two atoms and two lone pairs on the oxygen. So areas four electron densities, so sp3 uh, tetrahedral electron geometry. Electron geometry is also bent, but again, it doesn't matter. So the tetrahedral uh, electron geometry means that we have a sp3 hybridization. 